Welcome to 90210 Universe, a podcast dedicated to showcasing unique, creative, and diverse humans who are making their mark by living their legacies. Visionaries who took and take action daily. We all have a story. Here, we share ours to inspire, move, and empower others. It's okay to face challenges as we all journey through survival, thriving, and succeed in life. So join us as we spotlight rock stars who navigate the roller coasters of life and use their uniqueness to show that if they can do it, so can you. Right. Hello and welcome back. Welcome to another episode of the 90210 Universe. Of course, it's a podcast, though you might be seeing it on YouTube. As you know, we are here showcasing, highlighting, spotlighting individuals, people who have a story to tell, people who are living their legacies, people who are making a difference, big, small, somehow. And really, those who are living legacies and being their change. Therefore, as you can see already on the screen, there's a gentleman who dressed up much more than I did with me today. And I have the pleasure of welcoming Chief Dr. Lester Bailey. Now, I happened to meet this amazing gentleman through 90210. Got to be honest about it. And... He was in two of our events, and he is also part of 90210. However, how would you introduce yourself in, let's say, three sentences, Chief Dr. Lister Bailey? First of all, thank you, Dr. Nella Forrest. I appreciate being here, and I am so happy to be a part of the 90210 universe. It's, it's really changed my life in so many ways. I'd like to talk about myself as the person who never quite knew where he would be and what was the best place to be in. I was kind of like that kid who always wanted to know how the other half lived <laughs> and see if I could aspire to be there. But having this strange thing called doubt. <laughs> Ooh, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> so, so since you're bringing up doubt, okay, um, your background does not necessarily scream out loud that you are part of a very innovative organization, aside from 90210. You're also a very important part of the Minditorium universe, and I believe you have a lot to do with films such as co-founding the Niagara Film Festival, you know. Oh, yes. So how, how does that connect to where you come from, doubt, and now doing all of these really important things? Well, it's funny when we really look at ourselves. You remember growing up as a kid and you would just try anything. You would just jump in and you failed how many different times you know we all have failed during something and as a child i was that that was that one kid believe it or not i used to be a stutterer i used to be a major stutterer really? and i was teased a lot about stuttering mm. so you know you get from the bullies in life about how you speak and you, you don't think that you can do things just because you slow down even though today i still stutter but i have learned how to to mask it in a certain type of way. I've learned how to mask my stuttering and it's simply because I have learned to slow down my speech and I can do it by pausing, but pausing with a thought so no one can see it and I can flow through how someone does that. I started out with my life of stuttering, but I had to learn how to beat stuttering. And that, one of the can, things can I just interrupt you because that's just <laughs> sure. amazing. I mean, I tell people to slow down and I, I don't stutter, but sometimes the words come out faster <laughs> than they should. <laughs> and then they're like, yes. you know how like dominoes, all of a sudden everything falls and nobody knows what you're saying anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I always think that you are so thoughtful 
and that you know, you're actually thinking about the answers, which you are, but what yeah. a great little, I don't know, method to work on the stutter. That is awesome. Well, I also worked on reading. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I know about stutterers is that when you read, you can't stutter in your head. You want to be able to, you know, you know, it's hard to get the words out of your throat, mm -hmm. but when you read, it is so difficult to stutter because your brain doesn't know how to. Mm -hmm. So because I became a reader and I read over and over and over again, mm -hmm. I learned to beat this. I don't want to call it a something that would just stop you. You know, you, right. you, you want to just stop because you just feel that you're the worst person in the world. You know, it's those doubts that we give ourselves. It's those disclaimers. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Those disclaimers, because you don't know how powerful you are just because your speech is sometimes slowed, mm -hmm. sometimes stumbled over. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anyone that does not stumble over speech, even today. <laughs> you know, it's the best thinkers of the world still have issues in getting that information out mm -hmm. and the saying it the way that they would just find it beautiful. But as a kid, I found out that that was one of my first hurdles that I had to get over is learning how to deal with people who were being me, who bullied myself coming up. Mm -hmm. So of course I had other assets <laughs> that I used because I love to run. I was one of the fastest runners yeah. in the state of Illinois. Wow. And I found it, yes, even in the state. I wondered how I can actually move, how I can go to the next step. So I would always play with my friends and we'd always play that game of tag. And I played that game of tag well until one day I was playing the game of tag. And as I was running, I was looking back at my opponent and I was looking to see what it is, who was behind me. Mm -hmm. That's a lesson that I learned about looking for people mm -hmm. who were behind you, seeing if you had problems. Well, I was running so fast, I ran directly into a tree. And when I ran into the tree, yes, <laughs> I ran into that tree kind of fast and kind of hard. And I, I still laugh about it today. I can still see the tree. I can still see the block. I can, I can still, still see, see it. <laughs> I can yeah. still see what that looks like. But it taught me that looking behind you is one of the things that we have the biggest problem of. We're always trying to beat mm -hmm. what's behind us instead mm -hmm. of looking forward. Mm -hmm. So that was my first lesson in life to start looking forward to things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as I was growing up, you know, I, I knew that I, I had some things that were really good. and I knew I had things I had to work on. Yeah. So as I began that track of learning those things, I entered into this funny thing we call here in the States. I entered into high school. Oh, yes, high school. <laughs> and high school builds the most amount of doubt in your mind. You know, there are very few people in the world who knows exactly what they want to be when they grew up. Mm -hmm. I was still trying to figure that out even after I <laughs> grew up and retired. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to know what would that be? So for me being active, because I've always been so active, I was on almost all the clubs that I could get on in high school. Hmm. There's only one or two clubs that I did not get on. And I couldn't believe myself that I would run into such a problem. Yeah. But I ran into that problem often. Huh. So I kept always searching and searching. And I yeah. graduated out of high school early. And I began college. Now, uh -huh. I was going to college and trying to figure out what did I want to be? So they had this thing called IT. And you want to learn, you know, computer languages. Yes. I was really interested in computer languages. And I, you know, learned Cobalt. I learned Fortran. Yes. And I was like, this is what I'm going to do in my life. Well, again, not knowing what I want to do <laughs> was not it. And I did not get that. I ended up getting a, a slight business degree at the time of being in college. Yeah. But I was always wondering why I was in college. Back to my favorite doubt, could I get out of, can I get out of college? It, yeah. Is it easy to get out of college? How much studying would it would take? Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to throw in this. I was um, 
a father at a teenage, became a father at a teenage, yeah. and I had to take care of my child as oh my a, a single father. Oh, <laughs> a single so, father. As a single father. So and a college I, student. I, and a college student and working um, a full-time job. And course, I was working yes. a full, full-time job. I was taking care of my daughter. I was yeah. going to college. And trying to figure out how to navigate that universe. Mm -hmm. Well, I never quite figured it out. I just kept going through it. <laughs> and luckily today, my daughter, she's a, an RN <laughs> today. Yes. But I, 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 didn't, I didn't succeed at what I thought I was going after, but I never gave up on pursuing that happiness. So I got yeah. into... It's more you're, about you're the, ask yeah. No, it's more about the I mean what what I'm hearing you say, we have all of these important things that we're supposed to do, right? Um, you mm -hmm. know, all these these in, intelligent people have these aphorisms and so forth. And, and one of the ones that I love is it's not about the destination, it's the journey, stupid. The journey. <laughs> And so what you're describing to me is the journey. You, know, you may have a goal, but the goal can change, and that's okay. Because on if you're paying attention to the journey, yes. that's when you – but what a journey thus far. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, so, you know, and it, it doesn't stop there. You know, yeah, that was know. really my beginning. So as I pursue and I finally get my bachelor's degree mm – -hmm. Of course, I wanted to go get, you know, a graduate degree. Mm -hmm. So now I've changed what I wanted as a graduate degree. And I'm still working at my company, which was helping me to pay for my graduate degree. Awesome. And the company I was working for was in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they decided that they wanted to move to New York City. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, normally when you think about being terminated, you're normally terminated because you have done something. Mm -hmm. You don't get a termination because your job decided to move states. Right. <laughs> I was married now and I just had my daughter and a, no, my second daughter mm -hmm. and my job decides to move. Oh my God. <laughs> so so oh. my job got the Mayflower truck <laughs> and it moved from Illinois to New York. Now, mind you, in between time of yeah. this, I was without a job for a moment, but I had taken the test to become a Chicago police officer. How, how did and that happen? Chicago police how did that happen? Just, because everything you've said thus far, there was no indication that you were going to go into that arena, which I think is an extremely important service. But thus far, you've been trying out different things. Was there anything where you would said, this is unfair, this is unjust, was it the bullying, or was it just like, oh, I can try this? Oh, in actuality, it was funny because the job had left, but I had taken the test to be a, a police officer, but all the time while working at a bank, I was planning on being a banker. Yeah. It, there used to be a television show with Michael J. Fox in it, and yes. he was Alex P. Key. Yes, yes, I remember <laughs> that. I remember that. Family, family Ties, I believe, was yes. the name of the show. But when he, I always wanted to be able to play with money and working at a bank, you know, you just had money because I was counting it mm -hmm. on a regular basis. But because things happen in your life, like I said, the job decided to go. But when the job left, because I had taken the test, I was up for getting into the academy. Hmm. And getting into the police academy was a new experience. But I told you that I'm in school for my graduate degree. Yeah. <laughs> so my graduate degree is in telecommunications. It's <laughs> so logical. Thought, That's logical. Yes. <laughs> I thought I was going to be behind the camera. That mm -hmm. was me. I never wanted to be the person in front of the camera. Sorry. So I knew that I was going to be behind the camera. So this yeah. was what, what was going on. Well, once you get on the police department, they decided that all that you want to do in your life changes because they say you must now give your life to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and being that part of the person who got that part of his life, and I'm going through a short story, but it sounds long, short oh. story. When I got onto the police department, everything changed. Everything was a difference. I had to learn how to deal with the streets. I never came from the streets. I never had dealings with the streets, but I had to 
be in the streets and taking on a new thought pattern. Mm -hmm. And again, doubt creeped in. Can I do this? Is this job for me? Would I be willing to put it all in? And my first day on the job, I, I, I often laughed about it. I used to be af deathly afraid of dead bodies. <laughs> and this is going to be I, I, well, I can understand that. I can relate to that. Yes. And my first day on the job, I had to remove three dead bodies. And I was ready to quit. I was ready to, to be through with it. I asked myself, can I come back the next day? But pushing, as I often have done in my lifetime, I decided to take on day number two. I think you all want to hear about day two. Before we get to day two, we're going to take a very short break. And we're going to bring you one of our valued sponsors, 90210. Be sure to check them out. Be sure to talk to me, to talk to Chief Dr. Lester Bailey, or anybody. Just write an email. And then we will be right back with our guest, Chief Dr. Lester Bailey, and day two of his Chicago police experience. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome to 90210 Enterprise, where your dreams take flight. Join an exclusive community of over 20,000 professionals, unlocking access to world-class business consulting and powerful networking opportunities with expertise spanning 12 specialized sectors, including network, business and ventures, real estate, finance, and more. Choose from our tailored access plans, corporate access and executive access. Unlock exclusive benefits of corporate and executive access, including a 30-minute orientation with Dr. Natalie Forrest, Executive Director of 90210 and President of the Media Vertical, and a 45-minute consultation with Ashkin Tabibnia, Founder and CEO of 90210 Enterprise for Corporate Access Members. Executive Access Members receive a 30-minute consultation. As a member, you enjoy access to special opportunities to expand your reach, participate, and collaborate with our partners, such as Vire and Depeche, and have your message be shared globally. Are you ready to turn your dreams into reality? Join us today and experience the difference. Contact us at 90210enterprise at gmail.com. And welcome back to your 90210 universe, where we showcase unique, creative, diverse humans who are living their legacies whether they know it or not. <laughs> and today's guest, of course, is Chief Dr. Lester Bailey, whom you already heard talking about all of the hurdles, the challenges that he overcame and how he ended up as a police officer. Day one mm -hmm. forced him to face something he doesn't like. Now, day two, you decided to come back. What happened on day two? You said it was an experience. Well, day two was my experience of being able to catch my first criminal, to be able to catch and lock him up. Wow. Now, as I'm with my field training officer, we get a call and my field training officer says, oh, you don't have to worry about it. It's only a man shooting a gun. And I'm looking like I have never seen this. I've never heard it. So yes. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. So my field training officer looks at me and he says these words, relax. The guy is normally gone by the time the dispatcher gives us the call. <laughs> I relax comfortably. I am in that world, comfortable world. And I say, okay. And all of a sudden we arrive there and the guy is shooting. And I look back at my partner and say, oh, we're going to go get him. My partner says, no, you go get him. I looked, it's like, what do you mean me? So I jumped out of the car and I started chasing this guy. I was running so fast because remember, I told you I was very fast and running when I was yes. a child. I almost outran the person I was chasing. I had to remember I wasn't running to beat him. I was running to catch him. So but you I, didn't look back, right? You didn't look back. I didn't look okay. back. <laughs> I refused to look back, but I was able to catch him and arrest him. And mm -hmm. the story began my police career. Mm -hmm. I was actually able to see so many parts of life and so many different people in life. It helped me to come to this part of my life. You know, I learned about it um, in my early 20s about personal development. Mm -hmm. And I went to a show uh, at um, the theater in 
Chicago suburbs. And I got a chance to listen to Zig Ziglar, Jim oh, Brown, Les yes. Brown. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> I got to listen to the greats, Anthony Robbins. I got the chance to listen to them. And I just knew that my world had changed. Mm -hmm. It gave me a different way to look at things and look mm -hmm. at people. Mm -hmm. So as I was looking at people, I started not to look at people as most police officers do. Because you're immersed in a world of hate, mm -hmm. doubt, of you know, limiting beliefs. And I had to learn how to talk with people in coming out of those limited beliefs. Right. Because I love personal development so much, I kept going and I, I got deeper and deeper yes. and did not let that negative world enter into my spirit as much as I could. You know, anything oh. that you do day after day after day, there's remnants of what's going to yes. happen. You know, if you look oh. in the in the sky, you touch the stars, you're still going to get a little bit of that stardust on you every time yeah. that you go. So I, I learned to work with him and I was able to meet one of one president who was at the DNC. I got a chance to meet him and him and I had talks about personal development mm -hmm. and he was such a historian. He asked me to be on his team and I became one of his bodyguards. That was the first time around. Then I'm sorry, I was like, I'm sorry. You're talking <laughs> personal development and then you become a bodyguard. How is being a bodyguard personal development? Because of being a police officer, you, you learn how to talk with people. You learn okay. how to move with people. Mm -hmm. You learn how to dig deep in some of the best and worst parts about people's lives mm -hmm. and to be calm in your area of life. Yes. Because I was always calm and I was only on the job probably about 10 years at this time. Mm -hmm. So I, I was able to learn from a president or a person who became a president. He wasn't president when I first met him. <laughs> I learned how to talk with him and he kept me level headed. He mm -hmm. kept me always looking for what yeah. more can I do in my life? Oh. So then I, I, you know, worked a few more years and I was able to help the first, first black female, actually the first female United States senator become senator. Wow. So I was on that track of, yes. of being with her. So because I was being with her and still working on the police department, still working day to day, like nothing has ever happened. You're talking about, remember, I told you, you don't yeah. know where your, where your right. destinies are going to yeah. go. Well, while working, you know, after she, you know, ran for office in one office and yeah. she came out of office, there was another guy from the same state of Illinois who also wanted to become president. But I met him before he even announced, had that as an announcement. Mm -hmm. and we just kind of had discussions. Mm -hmm. And because of personal development and all I knew with personal development, meeting another <laughs> president before, wow. we began talking about aspirations of what you could do next. Yeah, this guy became a senator and later became a president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I I kept pushing in that area of what I could do next. Mm -hmm. So as I retired, at same year that this president retired, I looked again and said, "Lester, what are you going to do next, <laughs> Doctor Bailey? That's got to be something that you're going to do next." Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine I, I met in um, Canada. He's my friend and mentor. He helped me to learn how to write. And I had always wanted to write my very first book. I always did. Since high yes. school, yes. I wanted to write a book. And I looked up and said, I don't know how to begin a sentence. <laughs> what do you do in order to write a book? Mm -hmm. Well, someone says, begin to write your own story. Yes. When you can write your own story, even though that you have the good, and the mm -hmm. challenging parts about your life, you learn to put that down. But this particular, and in fact, it was, my first book was a co-author book, and it was called Empowering Women to Succeed. And oh. I was the only male writer in this yes. book. Thank so, you, thank you, thank you for that. It's so important that we cross intersectionality. Yes, yes. Yes. So I I, yes. I got that book, and I wrote a couple of other ones. And, and one of the books I called was... You don't have the luxury of a negative thought. So <laughs> yes. out of that, I learned to doubt my doubts. Mm. That's how you get past. That's where you go into a new section of your life. Mm -hmm. You learn to doubt your doubts. Because if you are allowed to mm -hmm. have a, a doubtful thought, 
you you can take the time out to learn how to doubt that doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, in my first book signing, I had to do a public speak in Canada. So I got on stage. <laughs> yes. For the first time. I was in front nervous. of the camera, in front of the in front camera, of the camera in, in front of mm -hmm. an audience of 500 people. I spoke to an audience for my very first time. Now, mind you, I told you, you don't know where your destiny is going to lie in life. Mm -hmm. Some people know what they're going to do. Some people <laughs> project it into the universe of what mm -hmm. they can do. So I kept pushing it and I wrote several more books. I spoke on stage, you know, several times and became a podcaster. Also, mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> if you wonder how comfortable I am. And then, you know, I jumped from all of those experiences to meeting a guy <laughs> by the name of Ashkan Tabimnia. He's the only guy I'm going to actually name his name. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashkan was working with Dirk Merchant Films, uh, RevShare Films, which mm -hmm. now is known as Minology Academy. <laughs> I almost had to stop and go into the brain yes. and say what yeah. it was. And when we got into Minatorium, and I should say Minology Academy is another one that yeah. I can tell you about, but getting into Minatorium, we thought about the mind auditorium. What are you putting in your mind? What is that personal development that you've been telling yourself? What were the challenges that were going to be in front of you? Did you see yourself moving or did you see yourself stagnated? Because I've never been still in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but by meditation, I learned to keep that meditation going. Yes. So I found out films is a way to tell a story. Uh -huh. Music is another way to tell a story and to add personal development. So we decided to put all of those things together to help teach people in many ways, because everybody's not a reader. Everybody right. is not the person that can just hear it auditory. Mm -hmm. Some people have to be able to put their hands in things. And mm -hmm. that's how you learn by moving. Mm -hmm. So because my hand has been in all of the different facets of my life, I was actually able to go there. Mm -hmm. And because of Ashkan, Ashkan turned around and says, well, the 90210 enterprises, the universe, we're going to use the results of everything that you've had, which is one of the names of my company, Results Team. Yes. He says, we're going to use all of your skills. Have I have many skills? <laughs> and talking happens to be one of yes. my most major skills. I wanted to keep pushing that area. But while I was with the, the uh, Dirt Merchants and RevShare Films and now my auditorium, I was working on my doctorate. It mm -hmm. took me 15 years. <laughs> yeah, with everything else you were doing. Yes. It took me 15 years. And I was actually able to get it. And I also have two honorary PhDs. So I wanted to see what in all of my life, and you, you wonder, what can I do next? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I ask myself that question every day. What is it that I want to do next? And it's always teaching. That's what doctors do. We are constantly teaching because we know that our experiences, when, whether you know where you're going to be or not, you're going to find that way. So when you want to tell your story, and this is really where we see it that's important, whether you're in business, whether you're, you're in the arts, it doesn't matter what it is that you want, you have to be able to show someone you know what you're doing. People look at your background. Mine may be a little <laughs> ups, downs, and arounds. <laughs> so is the universe. <laughs> right. Yes. Topsy turvy. It's all good. Yeah. So did you have a question for me? No, it was just I'm 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 thinking, you know, it's it's interesting that you bring up a teaching because mm -hmm. um, you know, that's how I started as a teacher. And I had to learn that, and, and you've done it throughout your life, but I had to understand that a teacher doesn't have to be in the classroom, but they mm -hmm. would teach every day. And so just everything that you've said thus far, you've taught others. You, you know, I'm assuming, because I wasn't there, that when you, when you were in the police force, mm -hmm. you were one of the few who were not consumed by the obvious negativity and hate, which is very hard to stay out of in, in that environment. 
So you mm-hmm. were teaching others and you were probably sharing some techniques. You were teaching your first daughter and then your second daughter how how we can move forward and overcome mm-hmm. hurdles. Then apparently you were maybe not teaching, but you were sharing with presidents. So that's a lot of teaching already. And then your books, let's not forget the books. Yes. Yes. So your, your journey of your yeah. life. So how would you say... You know, thinking about Ashkan, whom you mentioned, and having clearly laid out in the last 20, 25 minutes how important it is to, I'm going to check my notes, to not look back, to learn, to doubt your doubts, and Mm -hmm. to ask the question, what can I do next? What do you think, and this is sort of the final question, what do you think is your legacy? My legacy is to understand that whatever comes in front of you is there on purpose. You're supposed to learn life lessons. Sometimes we get so upset being involved in everything, we stop, to, we stop looking at, what did I learn from this? Mm-hmm. As being a child, I learned that you're going to have pe- people who get in your life who don't want to see you succeed. Yes. They're going to bully you out of where you want to be and you have to push forward. Yes. As in being in college, you may not know exactly what you want to do, but you know you can do it. So don't stop just because it looks hard, because it's challenging. You're living your life because of the challenges. As in being on the police department, you learn to talk with everyone. Mm-hmm. Just because the circumstances are not always as they present themselves, Learn to talk with people, find out where they are, talk with them where they are. Never think that you are above or below someone. Always understand that people are you. So you're going to have diverse conversations, you know, where people have mm-hmm. have had problems. When they're giving you those things, don't live their lives. Learn to get the lessons from what they were teaching you in that moment. As in talking with political figures, You know, when you're talking with them and they've reached the highest pentacle of life and you happen to be a part of that pentacle, again, what were the lessons? What were the the things that happened on their way to the Mm -hmm. top? Mm -hmm. Because some of us can can climb that mountain. Some of us cannot. Right, right. But in in doing that, give me just one moment here. Mm -hmm. I just have to turn around and say this to somebody. When, When you're living that part of your life, and you climbing that mountain, you know that you can fall down. Mm-hmm. But when you fall down, learn you can pick yourself up because mm-hmm. people will see you and talk about you in different ways. But the way that they see you, the way that they talk about you, you can't, don't hold on to that. When mm-hmm. they say, it's like water down a duck's back, let it roll off and keep forward with your forward thinking. Because the more you move forward, the more often you move forward, uh-huh. the easier it is for you to let those things go behind you. And remember, I said, don't look back. Mm-hmm. You can uh-huh. always remember what has happened, but don't hold on to it because it's, right. it's hard holding on to baggage. Yes. And, and then moving into the film industry, again, I'm pushing forward to making sure that everybody gets the chance to see what they've never seen. Mm -hmm. because tomorrow does not show you what it looks like, but you'll make it through it. (laughs) True. (laughs) True. Yes. Yes. And, and, and that's, I think, you know, you mentioned, you know, your, your background may be a little topsy turvy and all of that. Um, But I think, you know, being originally from Germany, having lived in the U S for so long and now back at home in Germany, it's, it's what we call general knowledge okay and and Mm. we get a little bit through life we also get a little bit in school where we have to learn everything whether we like it or not so that you know a little bit of everything and then you form it into your own understanding and in your instance to your own teachings so Mm -hmm. the really last question yes (laughs) running out of time the really last question so that is you know the point about legacy What is your next book going to be? It makes me laugh because that same question was just asked of me three weeks ago. What is your next book going to be? 
And I will actually probably call it triumph, just triumph. No matter what you do, mm -hmm. figure that you're going to beat it. Mm -hmm. Remember I said, you don't have the luxury of a negative thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anytime you don't have the luxury of a negative thought means that you can't let that enter into what you think that you can and will do. Mm -hmm. It will change on you. So be, be your best champion, even when everyone else isn't. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I assume, uh, dear Chief Dr. Lester, that we may have to have you back. But <laughs> until we get there, because there's so much I want to follow up on, but you know how it works. Time is limited. So I want to thank you for now. And um, I want to thank everybody who was listening. If anything that the chief, the doctor, the Lester um, said resonates with you, just write us a note on, on YouTube, on, on all of the different podcasting sites. We will look at those and we will try and answer them. And if they're enough, we will bring him back. Now, in the meantime, while you're sharing, questioning and subscribing, again, I want to thank Dr. Chief Lester Bailey for his time, his insights. Look up all of the work he's doing. He did mention Ashkan, of course. So thanks to 90210 Enterprise. And a big shout out to our partner, Minditorium, as well. I want to bring them back in. And to everybody else, we shall see you with a new episode in probably about two weeks. So thank you and goodbye for now. Hi, everyone, for now. Thank you for joining us today in the 90210 Universe, a podcast dedicated to showcasing unique, creative, and diverse humans, who we are, living their legacies, making a difference, and thereby being the change supporting and inspiring others. Join our universe by subscribing to this podcast, follow us on social media, and contact us to join the 90210 Enterprise community to elevate your life and legacy today.